Hi everyone, Jane from Pandemonium Art Gallery here and today we are going to paint this funky, fabulous blue flamingo. Now this video is part of the Creative Arts Collaboration hashtag event, Color of the Year Art. And the challenge was to use the two different colors that Pantone chose for 2016. And the colors are Serenity and Rose Quartz. So those are the main colors that we are focusing on. You can definitely paint this in any color you like. You can even switch it around and do the blue in the background and the pink for the flamingo if you don't want a blue flamingo. Make sure you check out the video description below for a full list of materials as well as the music used in this video. On YouTube, make sure that you search hashtag color of the year art to see all of the other awesome painting and craft videos that are participating in this event. Today we'll be using the following colors, light blue violet. This is really close to the serenity color in this year's Pantone selection. Alizarin Crimson. This color is much darker than Rose Quartz, which is the other Pantone selection for this year. But with white mixed into it, this color comes really, really close. We'll use a hint of Diox Purple just for some shadows in the Serenity section. A little bit of Mars Black and Titanium White. The brushes I'll be using are a two inch flat brush. This is kind of becoming my favorite background brush. I finally got myself a new angle brush. This is about five eighths of an inch. It's a Liquitex Basics brush, size number 10. A three eighths inch angle brush and a small round brush. This one is a number four. I'm painting on a brand new 16 by 20 inch canvas that has not been prepared in any way, but you can get really creative and use any type of canvas you like. I think if you painted it on a long, narrow canvas, that would be really interesting as well. So here we go. So for this background, we're gonna use titanium white and alizarin crimson. And I just want kind of a streaky, misty pink background here. I'm going to take my two inch flat brush, wet it in my jar, wipe it off on the edge, and then I'm going to load up with white on both sides of the brush. Now I want to make sure that this is a nice pale pink because the rose quartz in this year's Pantone is a very pale soft pink. So I'm going to start with that and if it's too dark or too light then I'll just get a little bit more of another color. I am focusing on blending these colors a little more than I normally do. And I'm doing that just by going over it a few times, rather than just laying the paint down and moving on. I'll leave it a little bit streaky, but not quite like I normally do. Remember to press flat to lay paint down and very light pressure to spread it or to to blend it in. I'm just going to get some white for this edge. Okay, now we're gonna let this dry completely because we're gonna come back and do something I don't normally do, which is we're gonna draw the flamingo on here with chalk before we paint it in. So we want this to be very, very dry. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna draw our flamingo with a piece of chalk. And I chose blue chalk because we're gonna paint the flamingo blue, so that way the chalk won't affect the paint color as much, if at all. Now, when you're drawing with the chalk, you don't have to worry about overdrawing it or making a mistake because it will clean right off. Um, once you're done with your painting, if you have some chalk lines that are still showing, just let it dry completely and wipe over it with a slightly damp paper towel and that will take care of the chalk. So I want her head to be right about here and I want her to have a very graceful shape. So I'm gonna bring my line from here where I want her head 
up around and curving down like that. So like a really graceful and elongated S. So I'm gonna start right here and come up. draw a circle for her head. Don't worry if you make the circle too big. You don't have to fill it all in with the paint. And then her neck is going to come right off the top of her head and I'm going to follow the line that I made first. I'm trying to keep a pretty even distance between it. I'm going about a finger width. if I need to make it wider when I'm painting or narrower, I can make those adjustments. I'm going to bring another line up from the bottom of her head and about another finger width away from that center line. So about like that. Now her back I'm not gonna put a hard line on here when I'm painting her back. So I'm gonna bring my chalk line down just a little bit. But she's gonna have kind of a big, full wing area. I'm gonna put a little swoop there so that her neck has a kind of a graceful connection to her wing. I'm not gonna worry about the beak, we'll just paint the beak in. Now to start filling her in, I've got my 5 8 inch angle brush and I'm gonna wet it in the jar and then just wipe it off on the edge. The only color I'm gonna use to fill her in here is this light blue violet. I'm not gonna mix it with white or anything. So I'm gonna load up with that. And I'm gonna start by using the edge of my angle brush to draw out her shape. And remember, the tip of the brush always drags. Just a nice smooth line. And we're going to paint over all of this part right here where her beak is going to go. So just get a general shape in right there. Getting ready for this hashtag challenge with Creative Arts Collaboration, I was really, was really having a hard time because I don't paint in these colors very often. In fact, I had to buy this blue color specifically for this challenge because it's just not a color that I typically use. And I was having a really hard time even thinking of what to paint and of course all of the the typical things that you would think of with this color combination came to mind, you know, a sunset or a sunrise, things like that, but I just wasn't feeling it. I didn't want something obvious. And so I was trying not to think of things that are pink. And a flamingo kept coming into my head, and it's something I've been wanting to paint for a while, but Again, I didn't want something obvious, so I really resisted the idea of painting a flamingo at first. And then I started painting it in pink with the blue background. And I just, I still wasn't feeling it. It, it was too obvious and just not funky. And I like to do things different. So a friend of mine suggested do the flamingo blue and the background pink. And that was the most brilliant thing I'd ever heard. So here we are, painting a blue flamingo. Now I'm not overly concerned with the paint being evenly spread right now. We're just getting her shape in there and a base of this color down. We'll come back and make sure it's solid in a minute.
Now because I wanted to have some puffy feathers back here, I'm not going to outline it like I have here. So let's just go ahead and fill in this whole section. If you want to move up to a larger brush for this part, you can. I am going to keep in mind my brush directionality as I'm filling her in here. Not really because you're going to see it, though you may, but mostly so that mostly so that when I'm adding the the highlights and lowlights and details later, I can kind of see the direction that I want them to go. So I'm gonna kind of plan that out as I'm doing this. So kind of pay attention to the direction I'm doing here. Right here, I'm following this outer line. Here, I'm gonna follow this line. So I'm gonna come around and up like that. And then it's gonna transition between the two in here. Notice back here, it's starting to arc upward a little bit. So it's almost like everything is fanning out from this point. Now as we get up here to this line, it's okay to go outside of the chalk line a bit. So I'm going to kind of flick it and let the paint fuzz out a bit there. And keep that nice and smooth. Don't let it be a straight line like this, and I know this looks weird, but we're going to add so much more to it. In fact, I think I want it to kind of dash backwards rather than up like that. So I'm using the end of my brush now and just kind of creating some little feather ends, and it's helping me change the shape because I want a little bit more up than I want. I want it to kind of come around and back. So notice I'm using my angle brush on the chisel with the tip dragging. I'm not using it flat anymore right here. We have her base coat painted. I'm just gonna go through and fill in these spots where it's a little see-through, and then we can start highlighting her and giving her some shadows. Okay, so I actually forgot to tell you about one more brush that I'll be using. And this is a number six filbert brush. So it's about half an inch wide. And I'm gonna use this one because with the softer round edge, I won't get those hard lines in here while I'm, while I'm blending the highlights. So I wet my brush off in the jar and I notice I got a little bit of the Diox purple. First though, we're gonna add some highlights with the blue and the white. So I'm gonna grab a bit of this blue I'm going to bring it over to my white and mix it in until I have a very light version of it. A super pale version. And I'm going to put the highlight obviously on the top portions and then the low light underneath. So I'm going to use the edge of the brush and just kind of outline to start. Just right along the top of her head and the top of her neck. and then smooth that down in. Now, if your base color is still wet, you should be able to do this 
pretty quickly and easily. Mine is half dry and half wet, so I just smeared her neck a little bit. We'll clean that up with a damp brush. Make sure not to stick your hand in wet paint. So because my base color is getting pretty dry, I'll show you how to blend it in without that. So I'm just gonna add a good highlight here across the top. And then to get it to blend, I'm just gonna grab some of the blue and swipe over that just lightly. I'm using very light pressure. And you can keep doing this until the highlight is exactly the way you want it to be. Paint it out too much right there like I just did. Just add it back in. Gonna bring it a little bit farther down the back of her neck. Try and work in smaller areas so that you don't have to fight with paint that's drying on you too fast. I'm not gonna take it all the way down the back of her neck because that's where the shadow is gonna start. off so blue and get rid of this highlight that I put in there that I don't want and now I'm gonna bring this highlight down onto the front part of her neck where it starts swelling forward like this so again with the edge of the brush just kind of outline the section over it. Get some of that solid blue and blend it in. brush because we're gonna move into the purple and I don't want to mix the two. I got a little more paint there, dang it. If you don't make it to a spot like that before it dries, then just put a little more of your pink over top of it when you're done. So now we're gonna add the shadow underneath here, about to there, and then down this side of her neck. So I'm gonna grab just a little bit of purple And I'm gonna come mix it in with my blue. I'm not looking for a very dark color. Just a little bit more purple is gonna be a nice shadow. And just like with the highlight, we're gonna outline it a little bit. Smooth it in. Get some solid blue and blend it. With super light pressure on your brush. to go up into your highlight area because if you start mixing the purple in with the white then your flamingo is going to look more purple than blue. You just want this purple as the shadow. So I'm never going to mix the purple and white together. Barely dusting the edge of the brush over that line. 
because remember if I put full pressure on this brush, I'm just gonna lay down blue over top of the purple. Now the same thing here down the back of her neck. I'm gonna start highlighting or outlining. Let it kind of taper off up there. Press my brush flat. I got a little hole in the paint there from probably from sticking my hand in it. Solid blue and just dust over that line. And see how I brought the shadow around right here. I'll move the camera down in a second so you can see that better. And notice I'm not blending it out completely. I do have little streaks of the colors here and there, and I just think that helps to add to the feel of feathers. Okay, so I think I might bring her highlight a little farther down right here, and then have it transition into the shadow. So I cleaned off my brush, because remember, we don't wanna mix the purple and the white. Only the white and blue and the purple with the blue. I'm gonna start right here where I left off with that first highlight. I'm not gonna bring it down too much further. Just a bit. Solid blue to blend. And remember your brush directionality. Okay, clean brush again, and we're gonna make her shadow at the bottom part here. And let's clean up this little spot where the purple got out of line. So for her body, I want to really plan out where I want the highlights and the lowlights. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with kind of a scattered mess of light on dark on mid-tone. So I want to keep a lot of the dark up here through this top section. So this comes around and fans out, and it's going to kind of fan out like that. It's not going to cover all of this. I'm going to have some white highlights back here. I'm going to have quite a bit of the dark kind of come around here and then it's mostly gonna be in the center section where we're gonna have the white highlights. But that's how I see her being highlighted and low lighted. If you want it in a different way, you can do it the exact opposite, that's perfectly fine. Just know beforehand where you wanna see some light and some shadow. So I'm gonna start up in this section. So I'm gonna mix up that purple again. Say where you want those shadows to be right now. You can use the edge of the brush for a nice thin line, and you can use it flat for a fatter line. If you get carried away with the purple, don't sweat it, because you can cover it with your mid-tone, which is the blue. So I'm gonna pick up some blue and kind of very lightly dust over it. I 
normally don't like fuzzy ends, but up here I really like it because it helps, I think it helps give that illusion of feathers. But if you don't want it to be quite so fuzzy like that, then just get a little extra water on your brush and when you go over it, it will help fill it in a bit more. Just keep shaping that, the mixture of your purple and blue until it looks like you want it to look. And I think that's getting pretty close. I might add a little more dark in there. And I think I'm gonna bring this shape up a little bit more. Now, as you're working on this, if you feel like the color or the, the, they get too blended out or you add too much of one color and you can't blend it away, then just let it dry and come back over it. So in fact, I'm starting to get a little bit of pulling See how right here you can almost see the pink because I've gone over it with wet paint so many times and that may happen to you and if that does, the only thing to do is stop and let it dry. If you keep swiping over it, you're eventually just gonna remove that paint. So I'm gonna stop on that part and I'm gonna move down to this part. Okay, so remembering your brush directionality, I'm gonna have this part come down like that and I think I'm gonna have this part kind of come like that. So it'll almost, it's gonna be a graceful shape. It's not gonna be two different shapes, one going this way and one going that way. It's gonna be a graceful shape. So I'm just gonna start laying down the dark. water on your brush because that'll help fill in the, the little crevices from the weave of the canvas. This canvas has quite a heavy texture so I'm having a little bit of a harder time getting into some of those crevices. But a little bit of water on your brush will help that out. a good amount of pressure here to make sure that I get that paint laid down. I think I want one more area of some shadow, right, just a little bit, right here, because I feel like that's gonna help bring a lot of depth to this part where the highlights are gonna be. One way to make something look much fuller is to have your highlight by your low light. So I'm gonna put a little low light in here and then my highlights will really bring that wing forward. It's just a small area. And just out of a little bit of the same color as the background, but I've still got a, the tiniest hint of purple on here. And so just dusting in the direction I want the feathers to go, even if you can't really spot it, it is laying down the tiniest bit of color, which is gonna help us out. So once you're done with that bit of low lighting, stand back, look at it, decide if there's anything you wanna change and I can see a few different things. I actually wanna bring this part of her feathers up higher. So it's really nice and full right here. I think I do wanna darken up 
a lot of my shadows, but because my paint is really heavy, I'm gonna let it dry for a bit before I go in and do that. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and do her beak. For her beak, I'm gonna use my 3 8 of an inch angle brush, and I'm gonna mix up a very pale blue, about the same color as we used for the highlights. And I wanna make sure that her beak follows the direction of her neck. So I'm not gonna have her beak come out right there. It's gonna be pretty much in line with her neck. So we look, it comes that way. So that's the way her beak is gonna move. I'm gonna have it start right on the top of her head. And bring it down, I don't know, about two and a half inches. And then another one here off the bottom of her head. And now these two lines are not going to connect. Now from this line, I'm gonna draw another angle that comes down toward, toward this part of her neck. And it's about two inches. I'm gonna start a little higher here. So my line ends right here, but I'm gonna start up here and bring it down to meet that point. Get another little bit of that blue color. And where I started her beak right here, I'm going to draw a line that comes up to about the center of her head. It's a little bit of an arc. And I'm going to draw one from there that comes down and meets this line. And I'm just gonna fill it in with that same color. We're gonna do some highlighting on here and some low lighting too, so just fill it all in. Even though we're gonna paint this part of her beak black at the bottom, I'm still gonna fill it in with this color. So I took a little bit of a break from my painting. Sometimes I have to do that, um, I, and I recommend that everybody do that, especially if you feel like you're struggling. Take a break from it, don't look at it, come back in a little bit, and see it with fresh eyes. So now that I come back and look at it, I actually want to darken these shadow areas a bit, and I think I wanna brighten up these highlight areas. I also wanna work on this to give it more of a grand flare right here. So to do that, I'm gonna use a little extra water on my brush so it will help fill in this area a bit, and then I'll have the fuzzy ends after that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and darken all those up, and then we'll come back and we'll start working on the highlight areas through here.
Okay, I think that looks much better. So let's go ahead and finish putting the highlights in through here. It's really gonna be the same thing. We're gonna mix up a lighter color. And I'm going really light. I mean, it's just barely, barely blue. I'm gonna use the edge of my brush rather than the flat because I don't want her to have these big streaks of white. I want it to be really soft like this. So I'm gonna remember my brush directionality. I'm gonna come up like this and kind of out. So it's again, almost like an S shape. It's not just an arc up that way and it's not this way. It's up and out. blue and the same thing over top of that white. Now I'm not trying to cover all of that initial blue that I put down and I'm not trying to blend this white out completely. I'm using the blue as a way to soften it. If you still are carrying too much white around then just wipe it off on the side of your plate like I did up here. Grab some fresh blue and go back over it. And I wet down my brush a little bit. I'm just gonna mix that water in with the paint that's already on my brush. And I'm gonna use the tip and just streak out a few extra little feathers here. Got a little away. dark spot a bit. So just don't be intimidated by what you're doing here. As you've seen, you can, you can always change it. If you have to let it dry first, before you change it, then that's fine. But you really can do this as many times as you need. So if she's fighting you, just take a step back from her. Give each of you a little bit of space away from each other and then come back and do it again. And I'm gonna give her a little bit of a highlight in here. And then I think we're about done with her feathers. We can move on to her face. Again, following my brush directionality. A little bit going that way. But everything is moving up to this point at her neck. flat of the brush to blend them in. And really I'm not blending, I'm just kind of softening. That's probably a better way to put it. Use the flat of the brush to soften those lines. And remember I'm only dusting over. I'm very rarely putting full pressure on the brush, only when there's something I really want to cover and I want to lay down a lot of paint over top of it. up this one little spot and then I think I'm done. So I'm going back to my 3 8 inch angle brush and I have a little dollop of black. So what we're going to do is we're going to start working on her beak. Now, right here where the angle is, I'm gonna draw a line that starts, I don't know, half inch or so above that. And I'm gonna bring it down in an arc and meet right here about a half inch above that one. I keep putting random bits of paint all over my canvas today. So I'm using the tip of my brush 
and I'm just gonna drag it around and up a little. Clean up that line if you have to. And then I'm gonna outline it. Now if you're more comfortable doing this with a little round brush, like a little liner brush, you are more than welcome to do it that way. Whatever you're comfortable with. I am much more comfortable with my angle brush doing something like this than with a liner brush. I feel like I have more control over the pressure of this brush than a round one. And then fill that whole section in. So there's her beak. Now we're gonna give her a little bit of a, kind of a Mona Lisa smile. So we're not gonna go for an all out grin, just a little bit of a, a hint of one. So I'm gonna start it right about here. And the shape, again, is gonna be very similar to all of the shapes we've made throughout. It's gonna kinda come up, down, and slightly up at the end. I'm not gonna give her a big ol' Easy smile, just a slight upturn at the end there. Now for her eye, I'm gonna look at where, actually maybe just a little bit more than that. Okay, so for her eye, I'm gonna look at the direction this is pointing. It's pointing right about up to here. And I'm gonna start her eye almost in line with that. I'm gonna do the same type of shape back. Whoa, that got crazy, didn't it? Clean it up really quick and you're good. So we're going to give her like a little winged eyeliner. the very, very end of the brush to flick out some little sassy eyelashes. I'm gonna let that dry before I put her eyeball in there because I don't want it to drag any of that black into her eye. What we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight and low light her beak. And we're not gonna do a lot, just a little bit. So I have my filbert cleaned off with a little water and I'm just gonna grab white. I'm gonna highlight the top of her beak a bit. Just like we did in the other areas. Streak of white down there. And because her beak is already so light, I can probably just kinda scrub at that line until it goes away. But if your beak is darker, just grab a little more of your blue mixture which maybe I'll do. And just hit over top of it there. Now I'm gonna grab, I've still got some white on my brush, but I'm gonna grab blue. So I'm going for just a slightly lighter version of blue than, than the actual blue is. And we'll give a little low light down here. not comfortable painting around the black you can definitely do this before you add the black on her beak and her little smile so let's give her an eye I've got my little round brush here and I'm just gonna dunk straight into the white. Just get some pure white. And I'm gonna draw a little almond shape, starting at the corner. Give her a nice, big, flirty eye. If you paint over your eyelashes a little bit, don't worry about it, you can paint it back in.
for this white to dry, let's give her a little bit more dimension in her face. So I'm gonna grab a little of this blue, mix up a light color, about the same color we went for with the highlights on her. I'm gonna scrub a little bit of it in up here just above her eyelashes. Just kind of scrubbing it in. You can add eyelashes back in. And now I'm just gonna get solid blue and blend it. I'm gonna do the same thing underneath her eye. Even though this is in the purple area, that's okay, because I want her to have like a nice little highlight right here. Solid blue. And dust it over in if you've got some purple under there just kind of dust it it'll it'll melt into it and you can wipe at it with your finger a little to kind of smear them in now I'm going to take a little bit of this alizarin crimson and white that I have left and make up a nice pale pink about the color of the background Our rose quartz color and right here where her cheek might be I'm just gonna scrub a little spot give her a little blush don't make it real regular because then it'll be hard to cover up cover up the edge cleaned off and I'm gonna do a little of that blue to blend it back. And if it's too far into the purple, I feel like that might be too far into the purple to just use blue. And I'll make up a slightly purple color to... There we go. Much better. Cleaned off my brush again, and now we're gonna give her an eye. I'm gonna take a hint of my blue and make a pretty dark purple. I'm just adding a tiny bit of blue to it. It's gonna be almost solid purple. And now the shape of the white we did was kind of almond shaped. We're not gonna do the purple the same almond shape. I'm gonna make it a half circle. I'm not gonna paint a full circle because then she'll look kind of shocked. So I'm gonna kind of give her some sleepy, sassy eyes. And then fill that in. And now black. I'm gonna do the same thing with the black as we just did with the purple, but in a little bit. So she's gonna have a nice big pupil. Outline her beak and the bottom of her eye, the angle brush, the little one. Just at the bottom there and just across the top. Again, if you're more comfortable doing this with the little liner brush, you can do that. And on her eye here, I'm gonna bring from here down the bottom of her eye. And I'm not gonna connect it. You can connect it if you want. And then I'm gonna swoop from her eye down across this line. And up here, I'm gonna start on her eyelid and bring it down around there. Be 
give her a couple of shines and she's done. So I'm just taking pure white and it doesn't matter how you do this in her eye. I'm just gonna give her like a little dot of a shine and a little streak. And on her beak, I'm just gonna make a little streak and another one there. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you had a great time painting a sassy blue flamingo with me. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe because I've got some really fun things coming up in the next couple of months. Also, don't forget to check out all of the other videos in this Creative Arts Collaboration hashtag event. Just search on YouTube, hashtag color of the year art, and you can find many, many, many awesome videos using these same two colors. As always, feel free to share your finished painting on my Facebook page. You can share it publicly for everyone to see or you can send it to me in a private message if you like. So keep on painting and I'll see you next time.